Hi Maud. First one here. I am just putting all my stuff together. Hi Spike. How are you both doing today anyway? Hi Manu. No worries. 21 months is a crazy long amount of time, Manu. It is crazy. Also, feel free to add songs to the queue if you want. Song requests are on. Oregano. Run, mumble, run and hide. Right, I think I have everything together now. Yeah, I do. Hi, everybody. So let's do it. Ah, that's what I forgot to do. Right, need to turn the camera on. Give me a second. I am using my phone as the uh, top-down camera. Hello, cuties. Right. I'm going to put it in the fancy stand. Perfect. So yeah, this is my uh my working map for origami. It is actually a uh, a dungeon master screen for Pathfinder. So it's got these cool designs on it, but I choose it as a hard service for working on. Or, if any of you want to do it along with me, you can do. Otherwise, I'm just going to start by showing you stuff. Because I do have some, like... <gasps> Hi, cute Bart! 
there you go, Bios, for you. Yes, Manu. What's your question? This will get uploaded to YouTube because I have worked out how to separate the music from the rest of the audio. So yeah, if you're watching it on YouTube, there won't be any music on this. You'll just have to put your own music on in the background or something. And yes, I will teach you how to make the heart. So we're teaching you how to make a couple of things. Oi. So yeah. It's all going on YouTube, and I will show you how to make the heart, and a a crane, and a couple of other things. So yeah, first off is all the stuff I have, because you get multiple different kinds of origami paper and things like that. So, standard origami paper, I'll get some small stuff here. There you go, there's one of my smallest pieces that I've got. So this, you can see, is actually quite thin. It's called washi paper. And it's like the most common for doing origami with. And you can get anything that, you can get stuff that's thinner than this. It's called tissue paper, most places. And you use that for like making flowers and things like that. You can make really pretty designs with it. You've got this, which is the washi paper, which is like the most common. You make all the animals and everything out of this. You can make flowers out of it as well. It's just you can't do as delicate stuff with it. And then it goes thicker and thicker up until the point where you're pretty much using card. But the main thing is if you're just starting out, you don't want little pieces like this. You want bigger paper bigger the paper is the easier it is for you to learn how to do the folds and everything so i'm just using the small one today as like an example for you yeah i'll turn music down a little bit there give me a shout if it needs me turning down a bit more so yeah the larger the paper you can get your hands on the easier it will be for you at first no worries. And then you can, if you want to start doing intricate stuff and showing off, you can start making smaller things. So like, I have a, a crane I made here, which I made from this size of paper. But you can make even smaller. I've got an absolutely tiny crane that I made at work from like a postage stamp piece of paper. But yeah, if you want to make it easier for yourself at first, use bigger pieces of paper and then move on to the smaller stuff. Or if you want to punish yourself, just start with small stuff. So the main thing I'm going to start doing is showing you the different kinds of folds. So mainly they're called, well, most of the folds and everything were invented by a guy called, what's he called, Akira Yoshizawa. And most of the common animals and birds and stuff you can see are his designs. He made them. So like he did the original designs, he planned them all out and everything, released them in box. And he invented a lot of the more complicated fold. So simple, easy stuff first. If you fold it edge to edge and it goes down like that. That's called a valley fold. Right, give me a second, this camera's lagging a bit. But yeah, the guy who did most of the inventing and everything is called Akira Yoshizawa. And he did most of it. Made all the cool patterns and everything. There's a few other people who have like improved on it and everything, but he did most of the basics. He also did 
He also invented uh, water folding, where to make it easier to do the more awkward folds, he would wet the paper. And it also let you do curves and stuff much easier. And he like pioneered that technique. But yeah, first kind of folds we're going to do. It's called a valley fold. It's literally... Oops. Is you create a V-shape. So you got edge to edge. It goes down like that. Flatten it out. You create a V-shape like that. That's called a valley fold. There you go, you can see it a bit better there. So that's a valley fold. If you do it the other way up, so it's like that, it's called a mountain fold. Easiest, simplest things to learn at first. So you got mountain fold, valley fold. Now off the mountain fold and the valley fold, you can do what are called reverse folds. Most common one that you use to make like bird beaks and things like that is called an inside reverse fold. The way that works is if you've got a corner like that, that's a valley or a mountain, you fold it over however big you want it. So we'll go for, we'll say this big. And you can fold it over at an angle, you can make it like equilateral triangle, however you want to do it. And this bit that we fold it over goes inside. So you open it out. That bit goes down and inside. And that is your inside reverse fold. So you can see it going down there. Squash it. And that's your inside reserve reverse fold. And then there's there's other version as well called the outside reverse fold. This is slightly more awkward. So you do another fold like that. The edge you want it to go along. You open it out. And rather than this going down and inside, it goes up and over the rest. So you end up with kind of like that flattened bit there. And then that folds over that way. So that's the outside reverse fold. I've done that one a bit messy, but it doesn't matter that much. Now, one of the other ones that's possible, well, it's common as well. It's called a rabbit ear fold, which turns a triangle corner like that into a bit that sticks up. So I need to do a bit of prep first. So we need a line across here because the way the rabbit ear fold works is you're going to create a line that goes that way and a line that goes that way that crosses off below this point and that allows you to fold it in and have like a little bit that sticks up. So the way you do that is I've folded it along the middle line there and you're going to fold this edge that's in line with that middle edge there. So there's a couple of different ways you could do it. If you've got good eyes, you can just go straight like that. One thing I tend to do to make it easier on myself is I'll actually fold that backwards. And then I can just quite easily judge then that bit down there. You can't do it with every fold, but for the simpler ones like this, I find it easier to fold that bit over backwards. Then I can just get it to line up easier. Yeah, there's a, I'll try and include a couple of tips like that, like stuff that I've learned. So yeah, you've got that edge just gone down there. So we've got a nice line along there now where we flattened it. One thing you can use, my mum got me this. If you've got chubby fingers like me, or if you've got something that can make your fingers hurt, 
you can get one of these it's basically like a spatula and rather than using your fingers pressing down there you can just use this so i've only got to be this they're usually used for like sculpting clay and things like that so now we've got that nice line along there to do the rabbit ear fold you're going to unfold it and then do the opposite side down as well so you go down there so you can see that's gone that way now flatten it out nicely lift it back up again so you got that layer and that there and you can see there that they cross over underneath the point yeah you can use nails if you want spike it's just because i have bugger all nails because i don't like nails or if you got like stubby fingers or something or if your fingers hurt you can use something like this instead like you can even use like the edge of a pen or Something like that. Just anything that will let you get the edge without scraping it, basically. So, got those two cut, two lines there that go cross over underneath. The way that you do the rabbit ear is both of these are going to come down at the same time. But you're going to push that edge up. Like that. So you can see that's pointing almost straight up now. And you're going to move these edges back so they're in line with this until it gets to the point and when it gets to the point you're going to flatten it so it sticks up so I'll do it now so that's as far as the folds that we did previously went and you end up with this like curved over a bit and now you just need to squash it a bit and you end up with that shape there so you can see there I folded them in met that edge met that edge kind of far in as I can and then just squashed the rest of it and the way you even that out is basically you fold it over either way there so the bit that sticks up you just fold it over to either side and that there is called a a rabbit ear fold so I'll go through it again you start with a triangle like that you fold that edge against there so you get that triangle you fold that edge against there so you get that triangle and you flatten them nicely and that creates two lines that cross underneath the point so what you're going to do is kind of put these two edges back down here at the same time like that and it leaves a bit stuck up in the middle and you just run your fingers along it until you catch a bit in the middle of them like that and you'll have a bit stuck up So if I hold it this way, then do it. So you bring these edges down. And you squash it along that way until you've squashed that bit stuck up. And then you can neaten it up by folding it that way or that way. And that neatens it up a bit. And you've got that little bit stuck up there. That's called the rabbit ear. So that's a rabbit ear fold. Now, another one is called a squash fold. So I need to do a bit of preparation for this because it is one you need to learn, but it pops up often. But you need a couple of other bits ready for it. So I'll just quickly get to the point that we need. 
or the best way to describe it. So, occasionally you will have bits like this, like when you do the rabbit ear, that stick up and it's looped over, and you may have to get do what's called a squash fold to get it to the shape that you want. The way that works is if you get it looped over like that, you literally open it out and then you're going to round it off and keep it all together and this bit you're just going to squash flat and you're going to make it so there will be a line along there and you'll make it in line with what's underneath you don't need to worry about too much about this one because I can show you more of this one later. So this bit was up there like this. And all we've done is squashed it down. Like that. Hi Breener. So yeah, when you do a squash fold usually end up with like a cool little triangle shape like that. So that's a squash fold. It literally just means lift up a bit like that and squash it flat. Now, next one I can show you is called a petal fold. So I'll do this on the opposite side. So you will have a bit like this. But you can lift it up at the bottom there and the way that you do a petal fold is we're going to create two triangles that meet in the middle and then we're going to lift it up and fold it inwards so i will show you first the triangles that meet in the middle So what you're doing is you're folding this outer edge over along this middle line like that. You do the same on the opposite side. And that gives you like a bit of a kite shape like that. So these two outer edges have been folded over to meet the middle. And the way that you do a petal fold is you unfold these and you're basically going to reverse fold inside reverse fold both of these. So you lift it up a bit and along the line that you've just made that gets pushed inside. So it looks like that. So that bit is gone from out there. You've lifted it up and on the line you've folded. Along the line you've folded. You do an inside reverse fold to make it go inside. And then you flatten it out. And it looks like that. You do that on the opposite side as well. You end up with a shape that looks something like this kind of like a kite shape now that point that you've just made there that gets lifted up and you end up with this like a diamond shape with those two edges folded to meet in the middle that's called a petal fold there is another kind of petal fold as well which is what you do after you do the squash so that's the basic petal fold. If you've got a squash part like this, where you've done a squash fold, you can also do the same here, but it's a lot more fiddly. So what you need to do with this, with the squash petal fold, is you're pulling that edge there in towards the middle. So that goes over like that. And that goes over like that. So you then have those two edges 
going into the middle. And the way you do the other petal fold is you lift this middle bit up and turn them in. But this doesn't go all the way. So you need to make it go to a point there yourself. So there. And you go to a point yourself. And then that pit goes upwards. That's how you do the other petal fold. So that's the petal fold you do after you've done the squash. So the other one you can do is I am going to get a larger piece of paper to show you this. And I will also be back a second because I'm going to go and grab some food because food is ready. I will only be a second. You can go to the fancy BRB screen. Right, I has my food. Hey, the camera stayed this time. So what I'm doing, I've got a bigger piece of paper so it's easier for you to see. And I'm going to run through those folds again, but much quicker. So what we have. The fold goes inside. The valley fold. I'm going to do two, I'm going to do two of those. It's a valley fold. Second valley fold. So that goes down. If it goes up, what we're going to do now is a mountain fold. So that goes up, that's a mountain fold. 
this one isn't Reno, this one's just for showing bits off. That goes up, it's a mountain fold. It goes down, it's a valley fold. So we have this. So I've done valley fold and mountain folds there. This I'm going to collapse and I will show you how to do this later because we'll be making the bases for different shapes as well. So that's an inside reverse fold because it's gone on the inside. And the outside reverse fold is literally the opposite. It would be that. So you have the squash fold. Ooh, camera really struggled then. Come on, camera. There. So you have a squash fold, where if you've got a bit looped over like this, you open it up and squash it down flat. Like that. So that's a squash fold. Because you've got that bit there, you've picked it up. You've opened it out and you've squashed it flat. Then you have the two kinds of petal folds. So you've got the normal petal fold. <gasps> and Marie, lucky for you, it's all going on YouTube. Oh, my bitrate is just going up for some reason. Bitrate, why you do this? Yeah, it's still doing it. I can see it slowly going up. Like all the dropped frames. Um, make sure none of this is trying to update. Sorry about this, bear with me a second. I felt I have all the dropped frames in the world and I don't know why. God damn it, Mellow. We back. Has it done it? Cool. Right, let's get the camera working again. Yeah, I think my PS5 was trying to do a sneaky update. <gasps> poo poo pee pee. Hi, Alex. You caught me in the middle of technical difficulties. 
Hi Kelly. There you go. Seems to be settled now. <laughs> So yeah, the bit I was going to show is squash fold. So it's literally when you've got a loop like that, you squash it flat. And you try and keep all that in line. <gasps> yeah, it seems to have settled down now. No more drop frames or anything. Good. And then the other one is the petal fold so where you've got a bit that's folded over like this you fold this edge in towards the middle you fold this edge in towards the middle this is going to be like the rough and dirty version of it and then once this is unfolded this bit lifts up and the edges go in. So the edges go inside like that. At the moment I am just showing the the different kinds of folds, Kelly. And then you literally just do the same on the the opposite side. <laughs> I know Alex, it took me a while to like get it how I liked it. There we go, those bits are on the inside. Now you lift that up to form the diamond shape. Flatten it out a bit. That's a very messy looking petal fold. It's a vagina. Now you need to like fold this bit over. There you go. Now, it, now it's slightly more accurate. Just, just don't show Kelly. Uh, don't show Greg. He won't know what it is. Right, so that's the petal fold. And then you have the other kind of petal fold, which is after you've done the squash, that bit goes in towards the middle. And you do the same on the opposite side. And then these bits go inside again. So that's going in there. That goes in there. But with the fold you did before, it doesn't reach all the way with this one. So you need to extend it yourself towards that middle point. So you just roll it under. There. That's the other petal fold. Now, now we're going to do something really awkward. So, undo you, get you back to the base shape. So after you've done squash fold like this, come on. Find a more fresh one, you'll do. Boop. Boop. So now you can do something really awkward called a swivel fold. So if you've got a squash fold like this, you can do what's called a swivel fold. <laughs> Bart's first. Did you not know what that was, Kelly? It's Luna. I will pay you 
one pence every time somebody uses it. So yeah, the other one we're going to do is called a swivel fold. So this bit goes in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap which way around it goes. Now swivel folds I don't like because they're really awkward. The way it basically goes is you're lifting this bit up and you're reversing it so that bit folds over there. But it goes in line with this edge going on top. So I'll kind of show you. That carries on going that way. That bit folds over that way. That there is called a swivel fold. Boop. And yeah, swivel fold is... Is awkward. I don't like swivel folds. Boop. Boop. Now the last one is called a sink fold. Sink fold is very easy to show people. Yeah, swivel fold is complicated. I hate them. The last one is called a sink fold. Which can be complicated or it can be very easy. All a sink fold is, is when you've got an area like this. Where it's squared out. And you're sinking it into the middle of everything else. So... Make that square there, or try to. And sink folds, like I said, can be very difficult, or they can be very easy. And it's basically going to squash down, or try to. Mm. So you can see, I've basically put squashed it down there, and then. You flatten it out so that a bit sunken in that's a sink fold <gasps> hi greg yeah do you mean paper mario a real thing so yeah that is a sink fold sink folds can either be very easy or very difficult to think upon where you need to do one <gasps> thank you greg for 16 months it's very cool so that's our example kind of used up those are examples of the different folds i'm going to show you the different base shapes now so you can go over there i'll show you the other tools i have as well so already shown you this like a little spatula for flattening stuff it's great if you've got wonky hands or stubby fingers you can use that to help you with folds you can just go like that make it nice and flat the other thing you can have is a pair of scissors don't tell anybody you do occasionally use scissors in origami like the whole point of it is you're not really supposed to you're supposed to try and do it without but to get some things work it's impossible without scissors <gasps> Poor man who's not allowed to have scissors. You'll just have to use a sharp knife instead then. So yeah, using chis using scissors is technically cheating. But you are allowed to do it because some things are impossible to do without. The other thing you can have. Double-sided tape. If you want something to stay together really well. Because um, some things do just fall apart very easily. You can use double-sided tape to hold stuff together. <gasps> Man who running with scissors. Naughty. So, here's a good example. Here's a hedgehog I made. And he is held together with double-sided tape along the inside there. Hotch egg. Hedge pig. 
and then the other most important thing googly eyes all animals can have googly eyes and they just come in handy i may have vandalized a couple of things at work with googly eyes <laughs> <gasps> Amazon Manu Amazon it's probably only a couple of euros for that many as well like the thing that I bought this little tub that they're in they came in this and this is like 500 In all the eyes and teeth for eyes so now we'll do the base shapes like these are bases that you will use to make pretty much everything else i'll start with the photos of you kelly so <gasps> I do have a pattern for one somewhere, Bart, so I may make one in future. So we'll do different bases first. Simplest, easiest one is called kite base. The way you do this, you fold corner to corner. Let's create a nice line. You get a nice line down the middle there and then you just fold it so this edge is along that line and this edge is along that line go like this so that edge along that middle line this edge the same Fasten it all nicely and you have a kite shape that is called kite base next one we'll do it's called water bomb base because you can use it to make water bombs so you start off the same way you do one corner to corner to create that nice diagonal line you do the other corner to corner create a nice diagonal line in fact i just realized that it's better off using a new piece of paper so you can see the folds clearer or use a different one for each base so fresh piece of paper do one corner to corner gives you a nice diagonal line to the other corner to corner Gives you another nice diagonal line. So you get the nice X shape. Fold it in half one way. You get that nice line across the middle there. <gasps> Mellow, you little shit. Then you fold it in half the other way. So when you get it, you'll have this kind of pattern on it. You'll have a line there, line there. Mellow knee. Line corner to corner, line corner to corner. <gasps> you might have to find the song somewhere else, Brina. Because it doesn't Mellow like knee. some of them. Mellow nay. So, the way that you make water bomb base is see where we've folded it there and there. That's going to go inside, but we're going to keep this triangle shape here. So they go in, 
keep the triangle shape and keep it on the other side as well. I'm going to end up with a triangle shape like that. Hi, Wayno. <gasps> Is that Brina requesting weeb songs? So yeah, this one here is called Walter Bombay's, and we will be using one of these later. And then the other one we'll need is called Square Base. Square Base is the most common one by far, by like a big margin. <laughs> so Square Base, pretty much the same as the water bomb base but you fold the diagonals and the horizontals opposites so the diagonals go as a valley fold and the horizontals go as mountain folds so they're opposite ways <laughs> this is a spike song <gasps> So yeah, you just corner, you go diagonal, corner to corner diagonal, there you go, so you got the diagonals going that way, and their valley folds, you go the horizontals the other way. If you had BTTV, you'd have some Kelly. There's some on there. So the other. We got the other horizontal. So you can see there we've got diagonals going one way, horizontals going the other. And the way you do this, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I literally just bring all the corners together like this. So you literally just collapse it all inwards. <laughs> Good luck trying to teach Brina origami that her wouldn't fold laundry. But yeah, when you flatten all this out, you get a square base. You get a square like that. And it basically has like four parts that split off it and you can turn these over like pages <gasps> hi late dave so this is square base because it's a square and it's a base shape for a lot of things so now we're going to start making animals and shit we're going to start with the most common one but i've just seen what this is so yeah, the most common one we're going to do is the origami crane you see pictures of them everywhere is my sub badge <sighs> not making any planes today dave might do planes at a later point because we can do complicated ones so yeah, it is crane time. So let's pick a good red one or orange one, I should say. Making a dick. So start off with a square piece. To make a crane, first we have to do the square base. So horizontal folds one way. Horizontal fold the other way. This is so bad. 
<laughs> Hi, Marie. You might need to refresh. But there we go. Fold the half one way, fold in half the other. And then fold the opposite ways for the diagonals. <laughs> this is Bart. Bart did this. This is the Wii theme, but it's the worst thing you'll ever hear. Oh, Marie. Here we go. So we've done horizontals one way, diagonals the other. Now it collapses inwards. And that'll get us our square base. This is a Kelly song. <laughs> so flatten it all out nicely with square base so the way you start doing making the crane is you're going to do a petal fold on one side then on the other so we'll do the first one so one of the ways i find easiest to do this if you have to meet the middle line is you lift that up And fold it in. <gasps> A frog. So yeah. You start off with your square. You fold corner to corner one way. Corner to corner one way. Then fold your horizontals and verticals the opposite. And that allows it all to collapse inwards. Like that. And that makes your square base. And then you just flatten it out nicely for square base. Here you go. I am making a crane frog. Make the easiest thing first. And hello frog. Nice to see you. So this is the square base. What you do is you lift up one of the flaps. And the way I found the easiest is to meet, meet these middle lines is by lifting it up like that. And you can literally just push them against each other to line it up properly. Flaps. So you folded that edge in towards there. Fold. The opposite side, the exactly same. So you folded both of those edges inwards. Now, something to make your petal folds a bit easier when you can do it, is there does need to be a crease here. So you can do that by folding this bit over and pre-make the crease so you got those two edges in fold this down a bit to make a crease and now we're going to do the the awkward bit where these come out and they go on the inside <gasps> hi true uh, how are you how are you doing You've come in in the middle of us making an origami crane. So, you've done this edge and this edge towards the middle. Bring them out again. You lift the bottom tip up. And now, this bit goes on the inside along the fold that we've already made. 
We go along there. Same along there. You can see that outside edge is now on this edge. <gasps> it is nice to see you, Troa. We have missed you. I know you had a bit of fun travelling and stuff. So there we've got that outside edge in now. Do the same on this side, so lift it up. Bring the middle bit in. And fold it along the line you've already made. There you go. So that outside bit is now in. And you just flatten it out a little bit. And then to make the actual petal, you lift all of it up. There is your petal fold. So undo. So you fold that edge in there, that edge in there. If you want to make it easier yourself, you do that. You lift up the tip, move the edges on the inside, flatten it along the fold you've already made, opposite edge on the inside, flatten it along the fold you've already made, bring it down here, flatten it all out smooth, and then lift that tip up to extend it. And there is your petal, called a petal fold. And now you're going to do the exact same on the opposite side. <clears throat> Reminds me, I need to add Trua's songs to my playlist. I've got that one where you did a, a collab with a guy that you sent me. And I have that on like my my evening playlist for like when I'm on the way home from work and stuff. But I keep forgetting to add the rest. <gasps> Spike's not allowed any money. So there you got those two edges on the inside. Open it up. Lift up the tip. Push them in and fold along the lines that you already had. Boop. Here we go. Along that line. Flatten it all out nice. Lift it up. Boop. So there we go. We've got a petal fold on each side now. And this is actually called bird base. Boop. So most of the birds you can make, if you're listening Manu, is from making this shape. So you start off with a square base, you do a petal fold on either side. And that makes you a bird base. Is the camera frozen? Bad camera. There. That was just my, my phone being weird. I need to find out a way to stop it going to sleep and stuff while it's doing this. So yeah, to make bird base you do the square base, you do the petal fold on opposite sides and you end up with this shape. This is called bird base. And 99% of the birds that you can make is by doing this. Yeah Kelly, it's my phone. I have a fancy stand for it. In fact, I can show you, can I? Look. It is my phone 
in a fancy stand that lets it look straight down. Yeah, it's pretty good. Better be, it was an expensive phone. Well. <laughs> yeah, you should, Marie. It'd be great. Especially for when you're doing your Magic the Gathering cards and stuff. It'll look amazing. Right, so. Next part for making the crane. 50p a boop or else. You'll notice when you do the two different sides of it you'll have one side that's together like this on the bottom side that's split what we're going to do is we're going to make these thinner the way you do that is you fold these outer edges in towards this middle line again <laughs> Spoik. there you go so you got that edge, fold it to that centre line there. Shake that in it, mate. We need to get next time one of us does one of those streams where we're watching random videos and stuff. We need to show Greg and Manu and Spike everyone Devo. Show them all Devo videos. 50p, mate, for a bus ticket in it. So <laughs> we'll do the same again. This edge line to the center. That was out and about, mate. There we go. So at edge to the middle, at edge to the middle, flip it over to the same on the opposite side. <laughs> I've received Devil Crypto mapping. Same again. There we go. So we've made the split bit much thinner by folding those edges in. In it with this shape. Now, we've only got a couple of steps left to make the crane. We're going to make the head and the tail. And that's going to be these parts, but they're going to be inside reverse folds. So you open this bit up and you lift this up. And you're going to turn it inside out as you do so. That's your inside reverse fold. Salad fingers. I like the feel of rusty spoons. There you go. So you do the inside reverse fold, you end up with that. So, show you again. You've opened that up, lifted that, and then folded it the opposite way. There you go. Now you do the exact same on that side. Mags a Kimbo! There you go. This is the one that Dave likes best. So there you go, you've done those two inside reverse folds. The way that you make the beak is you do just yet another on either side. Depends which way you want to do it. So another inside reverse fold here. 
as the head. Then you fold these parts down to form the wings. And there you have a crane. Or is this the Alejandro one? There you go. There is your origami crane. Have you not heard this one, Kelly? This is Spike's favourite. So there. The more accurate you can do the folds, the better the crane will look because at the end. The more the better squared off your paper is as well, the better this will look. Because you can see like I've got a wonky bit there. Got a wonky bit there. Like wonky bit at the end of the there. It's just because I've not done the <laughs> Oh yeah, it's rocking up again. But yeah, you can see because I've not done the folds particularly accurate and I'm using the cheaper paper which isn't really squared off properly. It's like not that accurate. The other thing you want to do, if you want to hang these up, you can get string straight through the middle of it. And the easiest way to do it is to grab the wings like this, pull them outwards, and you'll form that little box there. And that's perfect for putting a piece of string straight through or through that way, or to loop. Filthy cheap paper. Yeah, this is like, the paper I'm using here is cheap stuff. It's like not squared off properly. It's not, like not particularly easy to fold. And it's like a year off of 500 sheets or something. It is dirt cheap and shit. I have the expensive paper, but I'm just showing basic stuff at the moment. So yeah, there is an origami crane. If you make a thousand of those, you're supposed to get a wish. I have definitely made over a thousand. I know for a fact I have. So yeah, a thousand of these. Made, you're supposed to get a wish. If you put like a thousand of them strung together and give them as a gift to somebody, that's supposed to be them getting a wish as well. Cheap paper. So, done a crane. We will do now one of Yoshizawa's designs. Because he does a really, really nice butterfly. <gasps> Buzz wants to see the beard. Let me just go and grab it. Yeah. There you go, Buzz. I know. These are all the expensive ones. 
So here is the beard bars. It's what Drek Greg dresses up like at the weekend. going to start one of Yusuzawa's designs. So that guy was literally, he's known as the Grand Master of Origami because he invented so much song stuff. So the way the Yusuzawa butterfly starts, the first one anyway, is with the water bomb base. So you have fold along horizontal, fold along vertical, Fold along diagonal, fold along diagonal, and then you're going to squash those bits inside while keeping the triangle shape there. So you basically pinch it and you do the same on the back side. Oh, and if any of you actually made any of these, like post them to Discord and stuff, and I will look at them. So, yes. Yoshizawa's Botfly. Now you've got the, the water bomb base, like this. You can turn it upside down. And you're going to fold this edge here to this middle line <laughs> there we go so that edge down to that middle line same on this side that edge down to this middle line Yeah, I'll have the VOD up. I'll try and have it up tomorrow, Bart. I'll download the two parts and stitch them together. There we go. So you go, you've fo you folded those two edges down towards the middle. Then you're going to flip it over to the other side. And you're basically going to fold along the halfway line here up when you want the tip of this to be like a centimeter or two above there you go so you flipped it over fold it along here and you want the tip of this triangle to be like a centimeter or two above the edge of it And then you're going to bring down these two flaps here. They won't go all the way down, they'll form kind of a curve here, but that's what you want. Heh, <laughs> butt skier. Alex! How are you doing, Alex? So, you fold those two flaps down, you create kind of this. <gasps> oh, on the panels, I knew there was something I forgot. Send me a reminder on Discord, and I will do it after stream. So, now you've got these curved bits, you flip it over again. You have kind of this shape and you'll have like a 
a rounded edge there. Now, this little bit that you left sticking out over the top, you're going to fold back this way. So you left that sticking out a centimetre or two over the top, it now folds back along here. And you want to keep the tip in line with that gap there. And then fold just a little bit back forwards to form like a little tip. And then now you've got this done, you're going to fold it in half along this line this way. <laughs> Wise guy, Greg. Now, to make the butterfly shape, you're going to pick an angle there and you're going to fold it a valley fold along that angle. I usually try and push it about as far as it can go to where it splits there, and that usually works quite well. So, you fold up along there, do the same on the other side. line them up and this little bit at the bottom here squash him a bit and there you have the Yoshizawa butterfly so that's one Yoshizawa butterfly there is Another version as well, which is a bit more complicated, but next you a different shaped butterfly. So that's the first Yoshizawa. Get another piece of paper, we'll get a blue this time. So this one. <gasps> I don't know, Dave, can any of them fly? If any of them can fly properly, you're doing it right. So, second Yoshizawa butterfly, you start with a flat piece square like this, fold it in half along the horizontal, <gasps> done a few, for, a few before Boz, if you check the videos, I can't remember them off by heart. But I did an Airbus Fabrina and a Jet Fabrina as well. So, fold it in half along the horizontal. And now you're going to fold this top in half as well. So, again, easy way I've found this is just by reversing it so you can match up the edges. <gasps> Are oh, you squaring it off yourself, Marie? <laughs> it was a jet Brina. It had wings and a jet engine at the back. It's a jet. So, you get your square piece of paper. Fold in half along the horizontal, and then fold the top half in half as well. So you end up with a piece like this. Next thing you need to do is fold this bottom edge up to meet this edge you've just created. So line them up. Fasten it out. So there you go, you got that one. You fold that bottom edge to meet that top edge there. Now you're folding it in half this way.
So back to the start again. You've gone fold in half. Fold that top bit in half. You folded the bottom edge to meet the top edge. Now you fold it in half sideways as well. So this is all set up for the next bit. So now you've got it folded in half this way. You're going to be folding this edge to meet the middle there. So again, I find it a bit easier to meet the middle line just by lifting this side so I can push it against it. Do the same on the other side. <laughs> yeah, it can be awkward squaring off all the paper yourself. So from the beginning again, square, fold in half, open up, fold the top part in half again, fold the bottom to meet the top, fold in half that way, undo it, then fold this edge to meet that line. Like this. Fold this edge to meet that line. Like this. And you get kind of an arrow head shape. So after you've got the arrow head shape, you're going to undo it all again. So you can see you've got preset lines on here now. What we want to do is keep that bit folded down. Now, we need to readjust some of the folds that we've made. So this bit, which is a valley fold at the moment, we want to change you into a mountain fold. Let's fold it back over the other way. And then these diagonals, that part there is mountain folds, that part there are valley folds, we want it all to be valley folds. So you go along that line, flatten it out a bit. There you go, so that diagonal is now all valley fold, and this one which is currently mountain fold, can be valley fold as well. The world's smallest violin. There we go. Messed that one up a little bit. There. So that's now valley fold all the way along there. That's valley fold all the way along there. And this middle bit here is a mountain fold. Now you're going to collapse it inwards as though you're making the water bomb. So keep the triangle there, keep the triangle there, squash it together. So you've got these bits that lift in by themselves, you lift it up, keep that triangle, squash it. Keep that triangle, squash it. Flatten it all out a bit. And you'll end up with two sides. One with like a full rectangle bit there. And one with two rectangles on two little squares. So what you want, you want the side that's the full rectangles. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I enjoy doing it as well. Like, there's kind of a whole zen thing when you're just doing the folding and concentrating on it. It's like getting it all lined up neatly and everything. So, 
next step is you're going to fold this edge here to meet that middle line there. Four. Fold down like this. And it will only let you go so far because of the fold that's there. You do the same on the opposite side. There you go. Hold those both there. Yeah, it is one of those things like I first did it at work literally to make little ninja stars to throw at my friend Fiona because we had like hundreds and hundreds of post-it notes we used and they would just get thrown away otherwise so I started making them into little ninja stars and stuff and we'd throw them at each other and then I started trying to make other stuff <laughs> this is Spike it's another Spike special one to pull my beard down so I can drink. <laughs> right, so we've got these two bits folded down. You would then flip it over to the other side. You've got the two little squares. And what you're going to do, end of this rectangle bit, you're going to fold inwards. So it's going to lift up, fold it in that way. Um, exactly how much you do it is kind of up to you, but I try to aim for it going halfway down it. You can see there, that's about halfway down. And then same on the opposite side. So it's not quite equal, but it's all right. You know, Kelly, when I'm testing out my scenes and everything, I've got my shout out thing that like plays a clip somebody has. Half the time I'll like just pick somebody random that I know. Most of the time when I pick Manu, it's that clip of Bart singing CPR <laughs> when you've got him to do karaoke. <laughs> and you've just got Manu and Alex dying on screen at the same time. Right, so this bit again, you're on the side that's got rectangle, square, rectangle, square. You'll lift that up and you're going to tuck the corner of the rectangle inside and you aim for about halfway down. Same there, opposite side, aim for about halfway down. I'm not super accurate with this bit because I'm lazy. But what you then do is grab this. And you fold it back so it's along that edge like this same on this side there we go so you got those two there like that What you're then going to do is fold this bottom triangle upwards and you're basically going to do the same as we did with the last one where you want it to overshoot by a centimetre or two. Flatten it out. Pull these two flaps down. You're going to cause a curved bit like that, but that's fine. That's supposed to be there. So you do that on either side. 
flip it over fold this head bit back a bit fold it forwards a bit to make like a little what is basically the head and then turn it sideways and again you're folding along that line there fold it all the way down cool and then again you pick the diagonal here fold it a lot along the diagonal like that turn it over do the same with the other side and try and match up the top part of the wings there you open it out and there is the second Yoshizawa butterfly so you got style one and style two so there are two different kinds of butterflies you can make So, okay, Marie, uh, follow, where is it? I've sent you an instruction site on how to do it. See if you can follow that from where you got lost. So there we go, we have Yoshizawa Butterfly 1, Yoshizawa Butterfly 2. Now, that is all I really had planned for making stuff. Um, what else can I show you? Um, tell you what, I will show you the, the parrot that can lean on stuff. So the way this works. You start with square base as normal. You're going to do the petal fold. <gasps> Rim world. It's the game where Brina kills everybody all the time. I think, what do we get up to? Like Aaron Mark 8 or something like that? Not like, you know, XCOM where Brina just murders Kelly at random. <laughs> so yeah the one i'm making now called a hanging parrot because he can hang on stuff especially if you make him out of a big piece of paper you can hook his feet over so the way it starts off is you make the the square base first you do the petal fold on either side try and make it neat
there. We will hold you down, lighten you out a bit, flip it over, do the same again. So we've got the petal fold on either side, but this is bird base. Now the way you make the seated parrot it is one of the ones that you can't do without cutting. So we need a pair of scissors. So you've got this shape here at the tip. We're going to cut along the center line down to this fold that we've made. So now you've got that split there. So we flatten it out, we lift up one of these flaps, flatten it out that way. Now to make the feet for the parrot, I'm going to lift up one of these and you're going to squash fold it. So you open it out. And squash it down like that. And this is going to help form the feet for our pallet. We do the same on the opposite side. I'm going to steal Manu's feet and make loads of money on OnlyFans. It's the plan. There you go. So you've, all, you've lifted that up, opened it out, squashed it flat, done the same on the opposite side. And it with these two little squares here. Then we're going to do even more petal folds. You're going to fold that edge into there. That edge into there. Where's my spatula gone? There. There you go. So you got that there. And I'm going to lift that to tip up and do a petal fold. There you go. So that's the petal fold. Flatten it out. Fold it back down this way. End it with that little kite shape. Run, Brina, run. And then to form the foot, we've got two flaps on this side, just one on this side. So you're going to fold down that way to where there's one side. Now we repeat on this way. So we turn it around, fold the edges in, do the petal fold, fold it over that way. Lift this tip up, fold the side bits in. This is much more fiddly because it's like a third of the size. 
do the petal fold, fold it down, and then fold it over that way towards the bottom. And then we're going to be our two feet. So there we go. This is the single flap side. It's the double. What we're going to do now is thin this out so we can form the tail. So you flip it over. And we're just going to fold that edge into the center there. Oh no! What could have happened there? It was an accident, my finger slipped. That's right, we put Kelly's song on instead. <laughs> there we go. So we've thinned out the tail by folding that edge in towards the middle, that edge in towards the middle. You can see the feet sticking out there. So now we have to flip over again. And this edge for the body, you can if you lift it up, you can see where the tail continues upwards. And you're gonna just fold so it matches up with that. It's pro Fortnite gamer, Kelly. There you go. So that fold continues up there. You're just going to lift this up till you can see it and flatten so you're in line with it. Maybe Alex and Brina can finally have their Fortnite date. You do the same on the opposite side as well. I'm going to use my spatula to help flatten it down. There you go, so now you've done this, we're going to fold it in half along that length there. And these two little bits sticking out will be the feet. So we've got tail and little feet sticking out. Now, if you've done it right, you should have three bits here. One of them is going to be the head. The other two are going to be wings. Now the wings are awkward because they are a squash fold, but you're not doing it the normal way. So what you want to do is you want to fold it down there like that, and it creates a crease for you there. You're going to pull off one part here, and you're going to squash along that crease. So the same as a normal squash fold, you want this bit to line up with this bit there. But you have to do this fold down first. So it'll fold properly. If you squash it down, you get like a wing shape there. And you will tidy it up. What's this shit? Balls, you picked a crap track. You can barely hear it. Uh, no, that squeal's hurting my ears. Bye. You can have emo tune instead. There you go. So we've got one wing. Flip it over. Gonna do the same on this side. So I'll fold this bit down. 
Make sure you get a nice full bear. Open it to make sure you've only got one. Just one. Pull it out. And then squash along the line. If I've done it right, it should line up with the other wing. Which it does. And you can start to see the beginning of the parrot. Now. We will do. Right, so now we've got the head to make. The way you do the head, it's going to be a couple of inside reverse folds. You need to open out, fold in, and this bit, there's no like no set length for it. You just kind of use your own judgment. And then outside reverse fold for the beak. And there is your parrot beak. And you can adjust the angle. You can literally just grab it and lift it to adjust the angle before you flatten it. So now we're going to tidy up the wings a bit. Where we do that is we're going to fold this bottom bit here so it's flush with the actual bottom of the body. So if you lift it up, you can see the bottom of the body there. So you fold along that. And then you just tuck it under along the fold that you've just made. And now it's nicely in line with the body. Do the same on the other side. This is one of the songs that I learnt to play on bass with my mates. Just spent like a good few hours learning to play this. There we go. And now we're just going to make a little flat bit at the top of the wing. And you do that with another inside reverse fold. So it goes down and in there. And that bit goes down. And then open it up for the inside reverse fold. There you go. So that sorted the wings out. And now for the hooks on the feet. The way you do that is you open up from here and you do another inside reverse fold about halfway along it. You do the same on the other foot. And it can now hook onto things. So yeah, you do one inside reverse fold and another on the other foot and it hooks down and you can now hook that on stuff. You want to put it on something. So I literally have one on the edge of my PS5 like that. In fact, here it is. Made with shiny fancy paper somebody got me. wonder who that could have been. But he's got the little hook feet and he hooks on the edge of my PS5. Like, I forgot I can actually show you, can I? There he is. Hooked on my PS5. I know the octopus I made ages ago. Whip. So, the other thing you can do which is very complicated with this, to tidy up the wings, is you can collapse fold the wing. So rather than it having that 
flat bit there it's all flat and the way you do that is you're gonna pull it all the way out and you fold back just this part of it there will already be folds for you to do it along It will form a flat part like that and then you flatten it back out and now the entire wing is flat it doesn't have that little lift in the middle of it and then you just redo this also makes the wing open the right way out as well because it opens this way instead So you do this other sink fold again, or the inside reverse fold I should say at the top, and you fold this bit in the bottom again to make it flush with the body. You go there's a little hook on parrot. And then the last thing because I know Manu wants to know how to make it we're gonna make an origami heart So, here's one I made earlier. So if you've got two-sided paper, or like it doesn't matter which way around you do it, if you've got one-sided paper, you've got to orient it a specific way to get the colour of the heart. So, if you've got two-sided paper, the way it starts off is... The way it starts off is you fold in half on the horizontal and then you fold this top edge to the middle. Again the easier way I've found of doing it is just by reversing that and then matching up the edges like that way. There you go, so you've got folded in half, folded you down. Now, what you do next is you flip it over, you're going to fold it in half that way. And now you're going to fold this edge to meet that middle bit. You do the same on the opposite side. There you go. So you start from the beginning again. Fold in half. Fold that bit down to the middle turn it over fold it that way and then you fold this edge to meet this middle line like this and like this so this should give you this pointy shape here and on the other side you should have like that little bit there so what you're going to do now, now you've got it on this side, you're going to fold this tip 
right down to the bottom here. There you go. Oh, there. there you go. So yeah, you've folded that edge to that bit there, that edge to that bit there. You flipped it over, so you've got this little bit, and you folded this tip down to the bottom. Now we're going to make the top of the heart first. So the way you do that, flip it over again. So these two little rectangles here, you're going to squash fold them. And you're going to do it from this end where it's pointed. So again, the goal with a flush, squash fold is to keep that line there in line with that line there. So, open it up, squash it down, keep that in line with that. You do the same on the opposite side. You end up with a shape like that. Now to form the top of the heart, you're going to fold that diagonally to there to make a point. And you can do the same on this side as well, so that diagonally to there to make a point. You got these two little pointy bits, you're gonna fold them in half. You can fold that pit point that bit there. There you go. You fold that in half, that point there, same here, fold that in half, to that point there. And you're going to flip it back over, and you can see the heart shape already. So that's the top that we've just made, there's the points. Now to make a stand for it, you can have it like this. To make a stand for it, if you fold it back over this way, fold this edge to the centre line, like this all the way. Flatten along there, do the same on this side, so this edge to the centre line. There you go. That edge to the centre line, that edge to the centre line. Flip it over again. So there's your heart state. With the back bit, what you can do is you can fold this back bit down and leave it at an angle to create like a little stand for it. And it can stand up then. But you end up with a heart shape like that. I guess that's how you make the heart. Yeah, it's cause Manu the the way that I make the heart is kind of a custom design. Like made it myself. There's a couple of different ways of doing it, but I prefer 
how it looks this way. I think this looks cleaner, especially with the stand at the back. So this one is kind of my own design. Same with the um, peacock that I made the video about before. Because there's a, a video of somebody making one of these online. It's not exactly the same and they miss out a lot of parts. But it doesn't look quite like this. And there's a couple of other peacock designs but none of them seem to be able to get the actual, if you're using patterned paper, to get the pattern for the tail. So the other video that I've made, this is a custom design of my own as well. And then yeah, once you start getting good, you can make them smaller and smaller. Look, there's tiny parrot as well. Yeah, there's a, a bunch of stuff that I've made. I am planning on doing some more of basically me doing I'm tempted to like because the videos I've made before have been basically sped up but I don't know how long YouTube shorts are restricted to can't remember how long they can be and I'd have to speed it up a fair bit for it and again, my camera and my PC are not that good. It struggles just making those normal origami videos sometimes. But yeah, we will do more. I will schedule in more. Uh, more streams where we will do origami and stuff. And if any of you guys make any of this, I post it on Discord and everything so I can see. I want to see what you make. And if you have any suggestions and stuff you want to learn to make, or if you've seen stuff that I've made before on Instagram or something, like I could do a stream showing you how to make those. But yeah, this will be it's me done for today. I will show you as well the easiest way to square off rectangular paper so I'll get this receipt if you've got shit paper like rectangular paper like this the easiest way to square it off you get one of the corners and fold the corner to the edge so you get that diagonal that gives you this bit here you literally just cut along that line whatever's left will be a square ready for you to use so if I cut along here now leaves you a square ready to use No worries, Manu. I know I was going slow, but that was kind of the point. So I could see you. Um, might not be increasingly small, Marie. I might do increasingly complicated. So you, you might want to get some bigger pieces of paper for doing the more complex stuff. Like I could do tiny, tiny origami if you want. Like I'll get a pair of tweezers out. And make the smallest like cranes and stuff that I can. But it is difficult. So yeah, that's me done for today. And if you wanna like I said, if you want suggestions on what to learn next time or anything you'd like to see, just like message me or send it on discord or something anything you've made like post on discord as well because i want to see what it's like when you've made it yeah i am heading off
I'm going to go and crash and get something to eat. So, yeah, like I said, any suggestions you have of stuff you want to see or um, like post pictures of things that you've made, things like that, just give me a shout. And who should we raid? Who's online? Who dis? <gasps> I know. We will go and see Piss Boy. He's doing one of his rare streams. <gasps> Penguin. Yeah. So. Like I said, post in Discord, say what you want to see. Post pictures of what you've done, because I want to see. Oh, you've still got it. Yeah, who else would Piss Boy be? It's more for. So. <laughs> raid message. Yeah, if you are subbed, I do have a raid icon. We'll go for that, the raid message. <gasps> Sorry, Sherry, you're too late. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I will see you all next time. Bye, baby, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.